battle challenges in Ogaro KTN News. Right, I want us to get into a conversation now. We want to talk about Wikipedia through Wikimedia and just focusing on a gender gap in that particular bit. And in studio, I'm joined by Winnie Kabintie. She's the co-founder of Wikimedia Kenya User Group. Thank you for making time. Thank you for having me. Right, I think this is going to be an interesting conversation because when you talk about Wikimedia, we're also talking about Wikipedia in terms of also content. And we just want to talk about the importance. What is the importance to close the gender gap even on Wikipedia and have more women telling their own stories? Yeah, sure. Indeed, it's uh, quite important to empower women in the digital information uh, space mm -hmm. because when we talk about Wikipedia, basically, if you look at the work of Wikipedia, it's to enhance info access to information right. as a basic human right. So it also means that Wikipedia being the resource that it is, um, if if we don't have more women there, and actually we don't, uh, mm -hmm. right now if you look at um, Africa, for instance, the content on Wikipedia regarding sub-Saharan Africa is only 23% mm -hmm. on women. So it just means that if more women are not contributing to Wikipedia, then they are also being left out. Their stories are being left out, and we, we won't also be able to um, close some of these historical uh, biases that we've had in the past about mm -hmm. our stories, mm -hmm. our people. Again, it's also about, uh, for me, it's also about ensuring that women are also empowered enough because, you know, the thing with Wikipedia is that you just don't become a consumer of information. Mm -hmm. You're also able to be a contributor to this information. Yeah, so I think for me that's one of the things that is really important. Mm -hmm. And I think um, if we even go outside the wiki ecosystem, yeah. you also realize when it comes to digital inclusion, access to information, and mm -hmm. even the skills that uh, people need to access information on the digital space, women are also, and girls are also marginalized in that space. People mm -hmm. don't know how to um, uh, leverage on content in the digital media space. How right. do you verify information mm -hmm. and this kind of thing. So I think when we are calling on more women to get involved, we are also looking at how we can empower them to mm -hmm. contribute and consume information online. Very well said. Then let's talk about the how. How do we achieve this? How would you empower women to get into the space? Good question. I think one of the most practical ways that uh, we encourage um, uh, contributors to join our community, because the Wikimedia community is a globally distributed community. Mm -hmm. We have local affiliates. In our case, it's uh, we have um, Wikimedia Community User Group Kenya. Mm -hmm. So this is an affiliate that anybody who is interested to get empowered and trained on how to contribute to Wikipedia and her sister projects, because we have Wiki Commons mm -hmm. as well. We have Wikidata. Wiki Commons is actually good for people who are writing may not be your thing, yeah. but then you're a good photographer. You can take very nice images. Actually, we have a campaign going on called Wiki Loves Africa. It's ongoing. So you can take photos around any key national monument resources in your country mm -hmm. and upload them. So this means that uh, anybody who wants to, let's say, get photos of Hills Gate or yeah. the Nairobi National Park, mm -hmm. they can have access to good quality images um, that are actually free to use without having to pay for that. So that's the joy of it. So mm -hmm. people can join local affiliates. We have affiliates all over the world. Mm -hmm. If you go to Uganda, you'll find a community there. So you can join our Wikimedia Community User Group Kenya. You can uh, check out our social media uh, handles like Twitter, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, somebody will be in touch with you and you'll be guided on how to plug into the community. Do you have to have any form of requirement or eligibility to sort of join the community? And is there a cost to it? No, there is no cost. Mm -hmm. We champion free knowledge. So mm -hmm. access yeah. to this community yeah. is also free of charge. Mm -hmm. But you need to be uh, somebody, the passion is there. You mm -hmm. need to, somebody, to be somebody who is in good standing with your community. Mm -hmm. And then you are able to join. So everybody is free to join if you are passionate about respective uh, sectors mm -hmm. and you want to contribute knowledge to that space, that would really be um, mm -hmm. uh, a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Then what steps uh, can someone take to create, if someone can create their own Wikipedia page, what step can you take to do that? 
Yeah, you know, that, that's, that's the question that everybody asks when yeah. you, they join this space, when we're mm -hmm. doing our trainings, like, oh, now I can write my biography mm -hmm. of somebody else's just because mm -hmm. I like them. Mm -hmm. So actually you realize that while everybody can edit Wikipedia, mm -hmm. there are also guidelines mm -hmm. that, you know, govern the kind of content that is put there. So mm -hmm. not everything goes to Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. When it comes to actually biographies of living people, that's mm -hmm. one of our guided uh, content on Wikipedia. Yeah. And there is a criteria. One of those is uh, the notability factor. Mm -hmm. So the person that goes on Wikipedia has to be notable. They have to have been written uh, by multiple reliable sources mm -hmm. in order for them to be considered as notable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about now women and the gender issue. You know, we've talked about this a bit earlier, but like, what do you think are the challenges, you know, that women have even getting involved in Wikipedia itself to be a contributor? Do you think there's a particular factor that puts them back? I think it's, it's the typical challenges that we have um, uh, women face in their day-to-day -day, uh, lives. Mm -hmm. And one of them is actually time. Mm -hmm. uh, you find that women are often juggling a lot domestic work professional work and then just getting that extra time to go and do because this is volunteer work mm -hmm. you're not paid nobody is paid to edit wikipedia so that becomes a challenge uh, the day to day um caregiving challenges that limit the time there's also the uh consideration the perception that these things are technical and technical is not our thing yeah. you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. Totally, yeah so i think it's also a call for us women to be like there's nothing too technical mm -hmm. i mean if, if it comes to some of these things like um a writing verifying editing because you don't have to even create a, a wikipedia page from scratch mm -hmm. actually one of the easiest ways for new community members to plug in mm -hmm. is to e edit existing content Interesting. There are grammatical errors sometimes, mm -hmm. either because of just the English is not our first language, mm -hmm. though Wikipedia is available in so many local languages. Mm -hmm. But just a good example is perhaps English or Swahili Wikipedia. Then you just notice there's a comma that shouldn't be there somewhere, or mm -hmm. a word has been spelled wrong. Mm -hmm. That's something that you can easily do, mm -hmm. or even translating that content. Um, in Kenya, for instance, we are trying to get as many local languages on Wikipedia, like Hikuyu, uh, Luo, so that you're not you're not limited to accessing information just because you can't speak English or Swahili. Mm -hmm. You can access it even from your mother tongue. Very well yeah. said. Nice. Uh, maybe if I can get a little personal, as a woman in that particular industry in Wikipedia, how has it been for you? Uh, for me, as, um, as a person who has a, a career uh, and education background in communication, mm -hmm. I'm really passionate ab about empowering young people in information and media literacy. Yes. So um, getting in this wiki ecosystem actually just uh, created more spaces for me to, in, uh, to, to do that. Uh, I have, I think, trained about 250 uh, young Africans from 2020 up to now and wow. I continue to do that on mm -hmm. uh, just information literacy as well and mm -hmm. how so they can contribute to uh, uh, Wikipedia projects. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I, I gain as well is just getting connected and being in this network of uh, people from all over the world. I think that nothing matches that, sure. you know, every mm -hmm. country that you imagine going to you have a community there and you don't feel like a stranger at mm -hmm. all you know there are people you can call yeah. there are people you can actually walk into their physical offices mm -hmm. and just look at the work that they are doing one of the interesting things um that just shows the power of the community and the work that we do mm -hmm. is uh during a trip in south africa recently mm -hmm. uh we went to the, uh, soweto mm -hmm. where nelson mandela uh, mm -hmm. lived and grew for the better part of his life yeah and the South African community there, the equivalent of now the Kenyan user group, mm -hmm. they had this project that was about um, digitizing some of these uh, sp spaces. Like you'll find the house where Mandela lived mm -hmm. and, and Desmond Tutu. Mm -hmm. You can just take your phone and scan a certain code just at the gate and you get a whole history. 
Really? And information, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, that's, I think, one of the amazing things. Mm -hmm. And also access to tools. Mm -hmm. Like, you wouldn't get... So, even as a person, as a woman, mm -hmm. while you're contributing even on volunteer basis, mm -hmm. but then the access, the capacity building that you get, a lot of training schools, there are access to tools, translation tools, mm -hmm. um, and now, like, even knowing how to flag uh, disinformation yes. and misinformation, which is a big Very ill crucial. in today's world. Yeah. Right. Right. So then how will closing the gender gap in itself on Wikipedia benefit future generation by also providing a more complete historical record? First, we are able to be creators of our own stories. Mm -hmm. As we've said, it's only 23% of information about women and our people on Wikipedia. You can imagine even this 23%, all of that is not even written by um, uh, some Africans, mm -hmm. uh, and then so sometimes what well, that happens, so like it's bad, but sometimes there are, there are contexts that mm -hmm. are missed, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, we become, we own our stories. Again, we also bring women to the limelight. Yeah. Uh, you also re realize that there are a lot of women who are doing, uh, notable women who are doing so much, but the information is not, is not there because mm -hmm. we are a very patriarchal society as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. A good example is actually Chief, um, the Chief Justice, Martha Komi. Komi right. You can imagine until her nomination, mm -hmm. she had no biography on Wikipedia. Yeah. 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 But since then she has, we mm -hmm. created it. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm the person who started that page and very it has lovely. multiple views. Yeah. So you can imagine even for now, we have so many judges yeah. who are also not known. Mm -hmm. I'm sure even with the recent case we had on Joey, people yes. are getting to know about Justice Nzoka for the first time. That's true. That's yeah. very true. Yeah. So I think that's just the practical aspects of it, just putting ourselves out there mm -hmm. and closing also content. It's not just also about women, but it's also the content gaps. Mm -hmm. If a, a, a powerful woman scientist is missing from that space, then there's also information about scientists in Africa mm -hmm. that is also not being covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With what you've said, having this woman, especially on Wikipedia, if we do that, what impact do you think that will create even for future generations of women in Africa? First, I believe we will have very tech survey um, uh, uh, women and girls. Mm -hmm. And I would actually just say girls, uh, particularly looking at the demographic that we have uh, mm -hmm. where in, in, in our country, where 80% of us are young people. Mm -hmm. So we just have a generation that is growing up knowing that, because I think in the past we've just been grown in a, in a society where we, we consume. What's mm -hmm. given to us, we take it in, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So when people learn to contribute uh, information, you are also learning, how am I verifying this information? Mm -hmm. how, would, how do I ensure that it's accurate? How do I ensure that it's contextualized? Mm -hmm. Then that also makes us eventually mm -hmm. have very critical thinkers in the society, very informed people. Mm -hmm. And then the more also uh, we have people contributing, more people are able to access that information mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. without any other cause. So I think mm -hmm. we are empowering ourselves beyond just a Wikipedia page. Yeah. 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 It's bigger than that. It's bigger. So then as a community member, even with regard to, you know, gender, what practical steps should be taken to shrink the gender gaps that are existing at the moment? Uh, I believe that, um, and this is something that uh, there's actually a community, it's called uh, uh, Wiki Women in Red. Mm -hmm. uh, so what that does is that we, 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 there are links that are in red mm -hmm. for any woman who should be in Wikipedia, but they aren't. Okay. Like they already mm -hmm. meet the notability criteria, mm -hmm. or maybe even they don't. Like let's say some, there was a biography, uh, this is just an example. Let's say we are looking at William Ruto's biography and we mm -hmm. say uh, his wife is Rachel Ruto, mm -hmm. yet Rachel Ruto's um, uh, name is in red. Mm -hmm. That means she doesn't exist on Wikipedia. Right now she does, but that is the case of so many others. Right. So that becomes an opportunity. You see a page in red, then that's an opportunity for you to Mm -hmm. uh, write about that person. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the steps. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is just being identifying a niche. Mm -hmm. uh, like I've said, there's, Wikipedia is just one of the projects, mm -hmm. uh, but then there are so many other uh, sister projects that people can contribute to. So just knowing what's your cup of tea, where mm -hmm. do you thrive best in, mm -hmm. and just plugging in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, let's talk about what you just mentioned, the notability. I'm curious, like, what's mm -hmm. the criteria like to be in that space? 
I'm glad that we're actually talking about that, yeah. which actually brings me to uh, um, something that I will actually want to uh, uh, put a call to action for mm -hmm. right. journalists like you and mm -hmm. other colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Wikipedia does not exist in isolation. Mm -hmm. In fact, Wikipedia relies on external references. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to notability, a person has to have been reported, written about mm -hmm. by, by reliable sources. Okay. And this becomes information from the media, reputable mm -hmm. medias. Mm -hmm. So you can't just have your personal blog there and you're like, yeah. I've made it. <laughs> I've made it. So yeah. when we have um, more, more uh, journalists actually covering content or our people, mm -hmm. then we are building this reliability mm -hmm. for them. Then it becomes easier for an editor because everything we write on Wikipedia has to be referenced. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it will be taken down mm -hmm. because then it's not considered factual. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. once we have more journalists like uh, writing more about our people, topics that are missing, um, uh, covering even certain top, uh, topics, especially beyond politics, yeah. <laughs> yes. then that, yeah, then right. that really contributes a great deal to the mm -hmm. Wikipedia ecosystem. Mm -hmm. yeah. In that case, are you doing any kind of awareness or even like workshops, even with the journalists for people to understand that? Because um, yes, we do know about Wikipedia, but is there any, you know, awareness campaign that's out there to let people know, hey, this is what you can do on this platform? Yes, several campaigns have been done, especially mm -hmm. from uh, the affiliates level, like res uh, in the respective local communities. Um, uh, like even last year, we had the Open Journalism Awards that mm -hmm. the foundation ran. And this okay. was also like to recognize mm -hmm. journalists actually who are knowingly or unknowingly contributing to the work that Wikipedia does. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the uh, avenues for advocacy. Then we have um, uh, local communities as well. Whenever they have events, I think most of them always uh, have journalists invited. Mm -hmm. uh, there are press releases that have been done. Mm -hmm. But that's also not to say there's still more that can be done to collaborate mm -hmm. with the media so that there's uh, much more intentional you know content mm -hmm. coming out in mm -hmm. that view like mm -hmm. yeah we are doing this to advance free knowledge within the wiki yeah. ecosystem yeah. yeah okay now as we close your final thoughts maybe on what more we can do as women as you have said there's a lot of things we can do to empower women but even the young girls who are in school let's say who are in university and are interested to be part of that empowerment and mentorship program that you've talked mm -hmm. about what can we do or what are your thoughts on that First is the recognition that access to information is a human right. It's recognized by the UN as a human right. And even in Kenya, the constitution mm -hmm. and Article 33 right. <laughs> recognizes that as a right. Mm -hmm. So that already makes us feel empowered to ask ourselves, now that I have right to access this information, what kind of information actually do I want to consume or am I interested in mm -hmm. and uh, what is missing as mm -hmm. far as that information is concerned. Mm -hmm. right. Then that gives you ideas on how to plug into this wiki communities and say, I've actually realized mm -hmm. content on entrepreneurship, which is my cup of tea, is missing. Right. I'm not finding anything solid. Then you become part of shaping that narrative. Mm -hmm. The other thing is also like um, becoming very key about what we've just said about mm -hmm. being tech savvy. Like, mm -hmm. I, th I don't think in today's world, this is the day to say, by the way, yes. uh, computers are not my day. Exactly. <laughs> Mom, yeah. a computer to mm -hmm. attend in I yeah. think this is the time we realize. I think um, this uh, fourth industrial revolution, which is about tech, yeah. it has, has, I think, become the equalizer. Mm -hmm. So where we can all be on the same pedestal as men and mm -hmm. not feel like, they have a head start and we yeah, don't. Right. Yeah. Right. Very interesting. I feel so enlightened. I actually learned a lot from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. That is Winnie Kabinti. She's the co-founder Wikimedia Kenya User Group. Thank you so much for your time. Right. We're taking a short commercial break here on Africa Speaks. We'll be back with more stories from around the world. Stay with us.